Hey guys, Monica Palumbo here, and as you can tell, it is Girl Power Nation, which gets me so excited to see these females behind the wheel and in the sport. Natalie Decker, Leilani Munter. Um, now, we know that in NASCAR, you guys normally start from a younger age, but when you were kids, did you participate in the other sports? Yeah, I actually did. I played hockey in high school, and it was super fun. I learned so much, and it actually has taught me things that I can take over into the racing world. All right, what about you, Leilani? Any other sports other than racing? Yeah, I did soccer, I did football, um, just for fun. I wasn't like playing professionally, but I did also gymnastics and did a lot of horseback riding. And um, yeah, I grew, I grew up doing a lot of things outside, so. Well, tell us, when was that moment where you realized that you could make a career in racing? You know, that's a good question because last year I got signed with Venture Motorsports for seven races. And that was like a big like eye opener for me, like, wow, this could actually happen. And that's kind of when that happened. What about for you? For me, it was a race team owner that came over to me and said, you should really make a go of this. I think you have some natural ability with speed and told me to pursue it. And the very next week I started searching for sponsorship and it took me nine months to find my first sponsor. Um, but nine months later, I ran my first race outside of San Diego and um, fought for the lead and just was hooked and that was 17 years ago. Wow, and look at you now. Um, I know you guys get a lot of advice in the sport. What's the most um, empowering advice that you've ever received? There was one, it was really cool. Um, I raced against a guy who only actually had one arm. His name was Lyle Nowak and I was having a really bad day and he was like, Natalie, you're gonna have a lot of these. You just always have to think it's raindrops hitting a battleship and I was like, like, wow, that is amazing. I'm going to think of that now when I have bad days. Yeah, that's a good way to word it, too. I've never heard that before. What about you? Any empowering advice um, that you remember in this career? I remember, so I worked for NASCAR.com for a little while doing interviews, and it was actually Michael Waltrip that was saying, um, I asked him, what is, what is your advice for young drivers? And he said, you just never, ever know when your break is going to come. So you just have to keep going and keep going and and be ready for it when it happens. But you never know when that's going to be, so you just can't give up until it happens. Speaking on that advice, has there ever been a time in the sport? Because there's a lot of ups and downs in the sport. You never know what's going to come next. Or is there a time that you've been overwhelmed? You just kind of wanted to throw the towel in and call it quits, and then you overcame that? Or how did you overcome that? Yeah, there's been a lot, you know, with any race car driver, you always have ups and downs. And last year, I didn't know what I was going to do. And that was kind of a big down moment. But once the sponsor came on board, and I got with the best team there is Venturini, that then it was like a relief. What about you? Any time that you wanted just to throw in the towel and call it quits? Yeah, for me, the most difficult thing has been um, chasing sponsorship. And um, I've put together a lot of sponsor kits, had a lot of meetings that, that didn't go anywhere. And actually, the, the break for me um, for this latest race car was when I got the Vegan Athlete of the Year Award um, about a year and a half ago. And in my speech, I talked about how it was always my dream to run a vegan-themed car and give away vegan food at the NASCAR races. And somebody heard about it, and I got a call like two weeks later, and all because of that, here I am. So you never know, you know, what's going to get you to that next um, step. I certainly never thought when I mentioned that when I got my award that it was going to turn into a race car, but it did. Yeah, well, and even promoting the vegan lifestyle, have, have you noticed people have been taking on to that? Absolutely. Yeah, I've had race fans from last year. We gave away samples here at Daytona. I even had a race fan that tweeted a picture of his um, grocery cart, mm -hmm. and it was full of all these vegan, uh, vegan, different kinds of vegan meats and vegan cheeses, vegan ice cream. And he said, hey, ever since I tried your vegan food at Daytona, I've been eating vegan. So, yeah, um, yeah we, we've had a, a huge success with it, and That's I'm excited great. to continue it this yeah. year. It's great you're bringing it here. Um, is there anything that you guys want the fans to know about motorsports that they may not know? No. Well, lots of things actually. <laughs> um, but the biggest one is it looks uh, easy on TV and it's a, a lot more physical and mental than they realize. Yeah, I agree with you on that. What about you? Yeah, I'd, I'd agree with Natalie. There's a lot of people that think that driving a car isn't physical because they think driving their street car to work is not physical so how could driving a race car be but it it's really hot in there I mean I've raced in races I was at Texas Motor Speedway running in the summer once 
And it was like 140 degrees inside my car, and then you're in a three-layer racing suit, and then you've got the helmet, and of course the car is built to not let any air in so that you're not creating drag. And so it, it takes a lot of physical stamina. I've been doing um, boxing, kickboxing, weight training, circuit training, hot yoga, um, just to prepare for the season. Yeah. So it's more physical than people, I think, naturally think that it would be. Oh, yeah. It's a lot of work. Um, I noticed you guys like to spend a lot of time with the race fans, which is very important. Um, what's been the most meaningful experience or interaction that you've had with a race fan that you can remember? Anything stand out? A lot of them do. My fans, they're all so amazing, and I love all of them. Um, there was one time a little girl came up to me after a race when I won, and she said, like, this was her first race she's ever been to, and she saw me win, and she's like, I want to do this. I'm going to go home, and I'm going to figure out how I can get into racing, and yeah. that really made my day. Giving fans that extra confidence. Yeah, so for me, a lot of my cars are um, carrying activism messages, and I remember I got a message. This was back in 2007 when I was in the open wheel cars, and I got a message from a race fan who said, I read about your rainforest adoption program. So every time I run a race, I adopt an acre of rainforest to offset the carbon footprint of the fuel that I burn in the race. And he wrote to me, he, he looked like your typical, you know, NASCAR fan with a beer in his hand and a NASCAR <laughs> shirt on. And he said, you know, I read about your rainforest adoption program and I've been trying to figure out what to get my wife for her birthday. And I thought it would be really cool to give her an acre of rainforest, save an acre of rainforest in her name and ask me how I did that. And that was really a beautiful moment for me where I realized that the environmental work that I was doing was actually resonating with the race fans and they were embracing it. And that was, you know, 11 years ago. Wow, what a memorable experience. That's a great interaction with the race fan. Um, it's great to see females behind the wheel. Can you tell us why you think that there are fewer ladies in the sport than men? There has been fewer ladies, but now, like, I was just over at the um, little racetrack over there and went to see all the little kids and sign autographs and take pictures, and there was more girls than guys over there. I was like, wow, you go. Like, <laughs> and it was so cool that they, like, came and looked up to me and wanted to get pictures, and I was like, someday you'll be here racing and on the big track. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What about you? Why do you think there are fewer ladies behind the wheel? I mean, in the past, it has been, you know, mainly a man's sport, and I think, um, you know, that glass ceiling is going to be shattered. It's it's not a question of if a woman is going to win a major stock car race. It's a question of when, um, and just because there's been fewer female drivers, that hasn't happened yet, but hopefully one of the two of us in this hall right now will change that. <laughs> That's right. Lady power right here. You go get them, ladies. <laughs>